Got to Killing Me uh, video. My name is Delina Fem, and I'm going to chat to you a little bit today about why I didn't go to art school. You know, you've often heard me talk about the fact that I didn't go to art school, that I chose not to go, but I don't think I've ever really talked about why I didn't go. Um, and it's not n really the usual reasons. You know, the usual reasons that artists don't go to art school have got a lot to do with e economics. It costs a lot of money to go to art school. Um, we can go to university and do a Bachelor of Arts degree in fine art. Um, there are colleges like Vega, for example, that um, offer a Bachelor of Arts as well and things like that. But mostly it's a university course. You know, economics is a big factor because what will happen as well is that, you know, you go and get your Bachelor of Arts, you've got a certificate to say that you've studied art, but what does it qualify you to do? You can't really go uh, to an employer and here's my, you know, like you can if you were qualified in something commercially viable, um, where you can go and say, right, I have studied accounting or law or medicine or whatever the case may be, and here's my qualifications and with this I'm applying for a job. Um, and obviously <laughs> those aren't the only careers, there's lots of other careers that you can't get without a degree. Art is not like that. Of course, um, the proof is in the pudding, it's whether or not one can actually physically produce the work that one um, wants to market. And the market will dictate whether you've been to art school or not, whether you've been to university or not. The market is either going to like or dislike your work, your buyers are going to buy them because they like them, not because you are a qualified artist. But when it comes to art teaching, Although I've never been asked in the past, it does kind of make sense to me that people would be reticent to just go to any other artist, and I totally agree with that. Um, so I'm going to explain to you why I didn't go to art school, because mine, in my case, it wasn't only about economics. It wasn't only about the cost. I mean, going to a varsity and getting a varsity degree in fine art can cost you an absolute fortune, and there's no guarantee at the end of it. But there was much more to it than that with me. Um, I chose not to go to art school. It was more of an evolutionary process, as uh, more than it was like a sort of a set decision. Um, when I was in high school, I did art until matric. In this country, our grade 12, our graduation, high school graduation year is called matric for those international people. And I believe it's, it's called matric in other countries as well, but we refer to it almost exclusively as matric. So I did high school art until matric. And I was in an all-girls school, and it was one of those quite fancy, you know, schools. It, it, um, you were considered to be a little bit of a snoot if you went to this particular school. I don't want to mention names, and it, I'm assuming it's still like that. Brilliant school, loved it. I was very, very institutionalized at high school. Loved my school. Um, loved my art classes. Um, but I've got to be absolutely honest, now when I look back, at the time I wasn't so much aware of it, but now when I look back, I've got to be honest and say, oh, I don't know that I learned all that much. Um, we did a lot of practical and obviously a lot of history of art. I'm not talking about the history of art. I learned a lot in the history of art. The curriculum at high school was quite intense and, and I can remember that being, um, being a very valuable part of my artistic education. But the actual practical side of things, I don't really remember learning a lot of techniques. Um, and that might just be me. Um, it, because maybe at high school I wasn't necessarily all that mature and the most conscientious student. <laughs> um, and, and because my academics were sound, I kind of didn't really work very hard. So it's quite possible that it's just the way that I remember it. But I do remember very clearly that we had um, a woman, our teacher, I don't remember what her name was, but she was a lovely lady and she was great fun. Um, but she almost disliked my artwork, although she never really said that. But it was over the years of being in her art class, it became more and more evident that she was much more of a sort of an abstractee. She enjoyed the, the way out stuff and, and the darker and the more intense it was, the more she liked it. And my work was always very tame, very chocolate boxy. In fact, she used to refer to my artwork as chocolate boxy. She said, come on, Dilly, you know, stop being so chocolate boxy, break out, break free. Um, and it just wasn't in me, certainly not then. I think later on, uh, sort of maybe 20 years, 20, 15 years after I left high school, only did I really start to break out um, and start to discover a more contemporary way, although I'm still very realistic or, uh, should we say, representational in my artwork. I'm nowhere near being um, way out or dark or, you know, any of those things that she was trying to encourage me to do. But... For the, the whole of my high school career, I heard, um, you're not good enough. And it wasn't words. She never ever said to me, you're not good enough. But she was forever saying, 
you know, rather do this, rather do that. Um, and the grades that I got in high school art were not bad. I didn't get bad grades. In fact, I graduated third in the class, um, the first and second, who <laughs> were abstract and, and dark, um, as you can well imagine. And I graduated third. It was fine, you know. Um, I wasn't a terrible artist, but I also wasn't, I was an average artist at that stage. And um, But again, it had a lot to do with my own uh, lack of interest in developing myself. I wanted to learn to be an artist, whatever that meant, I had no idea. Um, and I, I had, it was only later that I began to understand that learning to really be an artist meant digging deep inside. I never dug deep back in those days. Um, and I think that's what she was trying to get across to me and I never ever picked it up. But what I heard, um, rightly or wrongly, was that I wasn't good enough, that my artwork was, was not abstract enough, it wasn't dark enough, it wasn't self-expressive enough, it, it wasn't weird enough. And then we went to, we were in our matric year, and we went to an art exhibition of the, if I'm not mistaken, it was the first year university graduates. We went to two exhibitions. One was at the, at, I'll never forget, it was at the Durban Opera Playhouse, uh, Opera House, Playhouse, whichever you want to call it, in the foyer. And, um, and then we went to one at the university, as a class, the whole class went to go and see these exhibitions. And uh, we went to other exhibitions as well, but these two particular exhibitions um, had an impact on me because... The first year varsity students were producing stuff that I oh, looked so weird. It was weird stuff, you know. There was very little representational work, and the work that was representational was pornographic to say the least. And and I I know that there is, you know, and I do a lot of nudes. I love doing nudes, and and my daughter does a lot of uh, posing for me in the nude. Um, and she does, she poses for me with the life classes that we do. So, so don't get me wrong, I'm not a prude. And I do understand that, you know, nudity in art is completely acceptable. But the art that I remember seeing back then was, it kind of crossed that, there's a line, you know. There's a line between tasteful nudity and just plain pornographic. And I, and I remember there was a drawing, I'm not going to describe it because it was really bad. Uh, <clears throat> but when I first looked at it, I don't, I didn't see what it was. It was a whole lot of squiggles to me. And I remember the art teacher standing next to me and just waiting for me. Just she just said to me, just keep looking. And she waited for me to eventually see what it was. And when it when I eventually sort of recognized the drawing, I was like, oh my word, that's disgusting. And she laughed like a drone. She thought it was incredibly funny because of my reaction. The class they everyone laughed about it, you know. Um, and and I think it was a case of, well, that piece of artwork did its job because it was designed to shock, you know, and uh, there's a lot of artwork out there that is designed to shock and that's fun, it, it's, I'm not criticizing it in any way, but I wasn't that kind of artist. I didn't like the idea of, of being controversial and, and unconventional, I, you know, I was sort of straight down the line. Um, so I had this viewpoint that if I went to university, I was going to get absolutely nowhere because I didn't produce the kind of art that they wanted. And one thing that I was very aware of is that I didn't want to be institutionalized to the point that it changed my art. I can remember clearly, clearly saying to my mother, if I study art further, it's going to cause me to become somebody that I'm not. I don't want to pander to somebody just to get good grades. I don't want to have to pander to a, a faculty or to professors or whatever they call themselves just to get good grades, just so that I can come out of university after four years of a Bachelor of Arts degree. It was four years in those days. I believe it's three now. I might be wrong. Um, but I don't want to pander for, for all those years um, just to get a piece of paper that I may or may not ever use, that is certainly not going to guarantee me any kind of success as an artist. And, you know, also there's a very small minority of artists that do become successful university degree or not and there's a lot of artists that do become successful without a university degree even in those days and certainly when you look back in history there are artists that studied under really serious tutelage um, and became very famous and there are other artists that never studied a day in their lives and became very famous so I never ever saw um, an art education as being essential to my success or failure as an artist I still don't um, and when I say art education, I'm talking about a formal art education, you know, sitting under tutelage and tutorship and, um, and being 
graded by people who have their own opinions. Art is something incredibly subjective. It's something that, you know, one person would love it, another person would hate it. Um, some people love, like my art teacher, love all the way out stuff. I remember sitting in class the one day and getting really irritated with her <clears throat> because she was asking me again, you know, Deline, break out, you know, just, and I got irritated with her and in, in my irritation, I grabbed a piece of paper and I grabbed a charcoal stick and I drew a tree. Just rough and horrible. <clears throat> it was not intended, to, it was intended to be rebellious almost. And I drew this tree and it had all these horrible branches backwards, forwards, sideways, you know, gnarly branches. Um, and it took me a few minutes to draw. It wasn't as if it, it, I'd put any care into it. But at the end of each branch, I drew a naked woman. I thought, you want weird stuff? I'm going to give you weird stuff. So the branch became sort of the woman at her hip area and then the upper torso hung down, long hair hanging down, arms hanging down, and of course, you know, boobs hanging down. So there were all these naked women that were organically kind of growing out of the tree. And I did it just as rebellion and she raved about it she loved it and why don't you produce more of the stuff and I was like, seriously i think it's hideous and um so i was never rebellious ever again because it never had the desired effect that i intended it to have um so so i just from there onwards almost ignored her um you know every time she told me to break out i'm not going to compromise i'm not going to compromise on who i am as an artist now, 30 years later, I think, you know, I should never have been so rigid. Um, that was a little immaturity, possibly, because I think in the last 10 years, my art has reached a, a level that I could have reached a long time ago had I been more prepared to experiment. So, while, while I'm saying, <clears throat> while I'm not saying that she was wrong and that I was right, I'm, I'm just explaining, you know, why it made me feel as if going to university was never actually going to get me to where I want to be. Um, there are, of course, pros and cons to it. The, the cons, of course, being the what I've already mentioned, the, the cost of university. It's huge. Um, and if you're going to go to university with a student loan, um, then you've got to get a job to pay back that student loan. And being a working artist is not necessarily a job. <coughs> So the, the cost, the debt that you're going to get yourself into, unless you've got money put away to do it, is exorbitant and I don't know that it's worth it. Um, another con is also, again, what I've already mentioned, the tendency for art students to pander to uh, their professors and the faculty to be able to earn the credits and earn the grades that they need to do well in the degree. I think there is a big possibility, um, if you're not uh, sort of careful, that your art can become bastardized. Um, however, I think there are a lot of cons as well, having not gone to university and having experienced the length of time that it's taken me to get to where I want to be, I think that may have been fast-tracked. <clears throat> I think it had a lot to do with my own immaturity, yes, but I also think that had I gone to art school or gone to university, that would have been fast-tracked. I would have been pushed into a place of maturity a lot earlier in my life. I would have been, I would have been presented with alternatives. Um, new techniques, new formulas, new genres, you know, new ways of expressing oneself. So I do think it would have pushed me a lot harder and I would have gotten to a place a lot sooner. So yes, I do think that there, um, there are pros and cons <clears throat> in my experience. When I eventually did decide that I was going to study art, and this was 10 years after I finished high school, because uh, I then went into graphic design, so I spent 10 years, just my art was my hobby and graphic design was my day job. And I eventually got to a place where I wanted very badly to be able to do my art. And I started on a journey of self-discovery as well as art education. And I was more ready for it then. It was 10 years later. I was 10 years more mature, but I did it on my own. I curated my, my own art education. Um, I do not profess to be a self-taught artist. I don't claim to be self-taught. I have been taught. I have been... Um, in lectures and in um, official institutions as, uh, as a guest. I've never ever enrolled for a course. I've gone for little small courses here and there, but I've never enrolled for an entire course at an institution with the aim of getting a piece of paper behind my name. I just wanted the knowledge. I didn't necessarily want the qualification. So like I say, I curated my own, um, my own education. 
I did originally spend a lot of time studying the history of art of my own, of my own accord. I'll choose a, an artist in history and study the entire life of the artist, read up about it, uh, <clears throat> get, a, get a hold of as much material as I possibly could and get to know that artist as well as I could. Because I do think a lot of our art experimentation and our, our art, uh, you know, our physical producing art development can be heavily influenced by what was done in the past. And I also did a lot of studying of current artists, artists that are current, either successful or not, just artists that I found that I liked the work that they were producing, um, some very, very well-known names and some not, and I did a lot of um, studying on current successful or and, and or unsuccessful artists, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, and then from there it sort of developed into uh, studying the techniques. Um, I, for example, studied the Old Masters techniques under the tutelage of a um, British Academy um, and I attended a lot of lectures online to various other academies um, you know, and, and institutions in the States as well. So while I don't have a formal art education, a piece of paper behind my name, I have studied under formal institutions, but I've also taken as much interest in studying under people, local artists as, as well as national artists, but here in this country, that um, either have or haven't got a formal education, but I felt that they had something to offer me. They did something in the artwork, that, and I could see that there was something there that I could grow from, that I could learn from, and I would enroll myself into uh, workshops and boot camps and um, classes and um, and I would learn as much as I possibly could from other artists. And then, of course, there's a lot of my learning that came from, I saw something somewhere, uh, oh, I want to be able to do that, and then I experimented a lot, you know. I did a lot of experimenting. I've I experimented a lot with various different mediums and various different techniques. Uh, you know, when I originally started painting back in, in the sort of 80s, uh, when I was at high school and immediately after high school I worked in acrylic. And then from acrylic I went to porcelain painting and from porcelain painting um, I went to oils. Um, I did a lot of work with washes. I worked with uh, all the different types of pastels, the, you know, the dryers and the, and the oil pastels uh, and, and all the different draw, drawing mediums, um, charcoals and pencils and you name it. And, I, and I've done a lot of watercolour as well. Um, but that's one area that I sort of felt I um, don't want to be there. I didn't really feel that that's where my, my um, bent or my talents lay. Um, and eventually, over, over a period of a good, I'd say a good 10 years, of messing with art, of playing with art, I, I settled down um, to oils. I, I still do a lot of drawing in other mediums, but I settled down, my main medium is, is oils, and I settled down to uh, discovering myself as an artist, and that's where slowly but surely my uh, current development has brought me to. Uh, where my, my art education has brought me to this current place that I am now with the sort of more contemporary type of portrait painting. I still do other things, you know, just recently, just uh, last week I finished a cloudscape, um, I do the odd landscape, I enjoy doing the odd seascape, but those are sort of in between as my main focus of attention is portraiture. And that is something that took me by surprise, and this is where experimentation is is so valuable because the more you do of everything the more you begin to feel comfortable in a particular area and I spent a lot of years doing wildlife you know it was always almost something that a South African artist would kind of slot into you know we have the most amazing wildlife in this country so most people just do wildlife and um, I did spend a lot of time doing wildlife and of course because it got such a big reaction from family and friends and you know wherever I put it up for people to see it it, it got you know, people would say to me oh those eyes or oh that wet nose or whatever the case may be so you tended to do more of the same do more of the same do more of the same and, and I became quite uncomfortable with doing wildlife not because I didn't enjoy doing it but because there was just more to life than doing wildlife there had to be more and I wanted to do dances and I wanted to do faces I wanted to do human interest stuff. I wanted to paint narratives. Um, so I eventually made a decision that uh, photorealism and wildlife are going to be put on the back burner for a while and I'm going to go in uh, that direction, which is what I did. And um, yeah, I think 
All of that that I've just told you would have possibly been something that university might have frustrated because I had to sort of come to these conclusions all on my own. Um, but in terms of the quality of the education that I've got now, I don't believe my education is lacking. And, I, and if I do find an area of my education where, oh, okay, maybe that needs to be uh, looked at a little bit, I can find it. There is no artistic education that is not available. <laughs> really, there isn't. To, I'm, I'm talking about to somebody who's not in a formal institution in a university or a college. Whatever it is that you need to know, you can find out. Um, so university is not the only way to go. And university is no guarantee that you're going to become a successful artist. So let me end off by saying that, that this is my story. This is I'm not necessarily advocating that you do or do not follow the same way. This is by way of explanation. This is so um, you can understand why I'm at the stage that I'm at now and what my artistic background is um, in its entirety. I don't feel the need to justify myself as an artist. I really don't. Um, yes, I do understand why a prospective student might ask me what my qualifications are. But other than that, I don't really feel the need to justify myself as an artist. I think the work speaks for itself. The work is either going to be loved or hated or People are going to feel indifferent to it and that is not going to change with or without an art education. I don't believe that I suffered in any way. I think probably the fact that my art education took so long to develop might have been a good thing um, in the long run. Um, yes, maybe I would have been a working artist a lot earlier than I, than I have been now because I was in a, a full-time job for many years of my life. And maybe that wouldn't have happened. But by the same token, I think my level of maturity back then was just nowhere near um, strong enough to be able to handle... Um, artistic development because it's an incredibly intense process and I just wasn't ready for it. I, I just wasn't ready for it. And now if I had to do it all over again maybe I would go to university but only from the point of view that I do think that institutions are still um, sort of re re respected so to speak from by the elite and it's the elite that run the galleries. Now I'm not particularly worried about whether or not a gallery is prepared to represent me or not. Um, I'm not in it for gallery, uh, I, it, it would be nice if a gallery came to me and, and I had one just a little while ago, but if a gallery came to me and said we would like to do an exhibition and would you put your stuff up and you know we have a big open, well it's fine, um, I don't have a problem with that, I'm not anti-galleries, but I don't see galleries as the only way out, but by the same token I do recognise the fact that possibly still, even in this day and age, galleries are probably taking artists that do have degrees behind their names a little more seriously than those that don't. It's sad, it's not right, um, but it is probably true. Um, and maybe not, it's maybe not true for all galleries, but I think it's still the norm in a lot of places. You know, artistic, um, there's an art clique. You know, it's a horrible thing to say, but there is. There's an art clique, and it's the academic artists, and it's they view themselves as the elite. I think, I don't even think they're really even conscious of it. But it's the elite of the art world who feel that they you know, have it all. We've got all the string of degrees behind our names and we decide what good art is and what, what good art isn't. Um, what isn't good art, it was terrible English. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to... I, I don't believe that we as artists should allow any gallery to define who we are as an artist, any education to define who we are as an artist. Art comes from inside yourself. And at the end of the day, if you are producing art that you love, that you feel good about, that you feel um, is a good expression of who you are as an artist as well as as an individual, and if you're selling your artwork, all the better for it. If you're not, it's a marketing issue. It's not because you're not good enough at it. Um, if you are not being approached by galleries or if you are approaching galleries and not being accepted, it's more of a reflection on the gallery's preferences than it is on your own artwork. I firmly believe that. Um, I've had paintings. <laughs> I'll give you an example. I, I sent in two paintings um, to an overseas exhibition, won really good prizes with them. Those same two paintings went to uh, four exhibitions at the same time. On the one exhibition, I won the fifth and the sixth prize out of 300 winners, I got fifth and sixth out of, and there was something like, I don't want to lie to you, but it was something like 5,000 entries, I don't know what, it was a lot of entries, and there were 300 winners and I got fifth and sixth. 
um, those identical, those two paintings, those same two paintings went to three other exhibitions, didn't even get a look in. Didn't even make it into the exhibition, didn't even make it into the shortlist. So go figure, you know, it's purely opinion at the end of the day, purely opinion. It's not like going to a doctor. You need to know that your doctor is qualified in what he's doing because, you know, it's a scientific thing, etc. Um, I, I will never take my child to a person that calls himself a pediatrician. I'm a self-taught pediatrician. Sorry, I'll rather go to a university taught pediatrician. Um, I'll never go, if ever I have to go to court for something, which I've never done before, but if ever I've got to go to court for something, I'm going to want to know that my lawyer knows what he's doing. Um, so, yes, um, but if I wanted to, for example, go to um, sewing lessons, I never will, I will never, I can't bear it, but if ever I wanted to go to sewing lessons, I'm going to go to a sewing teacher who knows what she's doing, whether or not she's been formally trained in, I don't know, some sewing academy. It's an example that I'm using. Art is not a science. There is a lot of science in it, yes. Um, I know that I'm probably standing on a bit of toes when I say that, but art is a creative thing. And while there is an extensive amount of knowledge that one needs, it is not knowledge that it's not imperative that that knowledge is gained from an um, an official institution. So that is my story. Um, use it, don't use it. Um, I'm not advising you one way or the other. What I am saying though is that um, if you need to get yourself into a lot of debt for it, be aware that that debt is not necessarily going to be worth it in the end. And there are other ways to do it. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you soon in the next video. Bye!